The makeup room of they think it's all over. This one today, Mr. Gale. Yeah, that looks fine to me. Nice one. Time to get into character. And welcome to this specially recorded video edition of They Think It's All Over, the sports quiz that's also got a book out, priced 9 99 from your favourite bookshop. Although not Rory's favourite bookshop, obviously, <laughs> which has sadly just been closed down by the Vice Squad. <laughs> With David and Lee is a football commentator who, during the close season, got away from it all on the beach. You couldn't miss him. He was the one wearing a sheepskin thong. <laughs> John Motson. And with Gary and Rory is a Scottish comedian and football fan who actually trained as an accountant, but being Scottish, he narrowly failed to qualify. <laughs> Fred McCauley. <laughs> we kick off with our goal celebrations round. We watch a goal being scored and then celebrated, and we ask the reason behind the celebration. Gary, Rory and Fred, uh, your goal comes from a match between Black and Gillingham. Here's Blackpool's top marksman and ex Stoke player Tony Ellis uh, nodding one in. So the Seasiders have another corner. Ellis up as usual, and he's there, and he'll claim it. The football is at Blackpool Rock. It's got yeah. relegation written right through it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good start, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> it's footballers miming their hobbies. Like, footballers have three hobbies, including golf, and they're doing golf because golf is e easier to mime than shagging a page three girl. <laughs> is there anything easier than shagging a page three girl? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's ask Gary. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a few page three girls in your time? You? Yeah, so is David, but it's page three of Horse and Hound. <laughs> On that win, lose, or draw program. Oh, Gary, you've got an interesting life being up at 10:15 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and you were on it. Yeah, well, I was getting paid. You were watching it. <laughs> As a Stoke fan, it must be nice to get a choice for a change. <laughs> I did 18 holes in Blackpool once. That was a hell of a stag weekend. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I've never played golf. Actually, I once played crazy golf. No, actually, it was a charity cricket match, but I dropped some acid. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right in thinking that golf is a wanker's game? <laughs> yeah. Well, they dress up as wankers just to prove the point. Did you play golf? <laughs> you play golf, Fred? Yeah. Yeah. It's very popular in Scotland, isn't it? <laughs> so, is it? so is wanking. <laughs> I even put my Pringle jumper on for that. <laughs> you wear a glove. <laughs> I must have had a golf day and they were playing the day before and one of them had a good hop, you know, knocked one in and... Don't mumble, Gary. It was a play on that, wasn't it? I'll give you one, which may turn into three. <laughs> Lucky right. you, Gary. If the other side can't get it more perfectly. I mean, you, you're just about there, but if, if we get the names and the actual incidents names from the what? other side... Blackpool players. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? You may laugh. Have you met John mm. Watson? <laughs> I also point out here, Nick, the last time I was on this show, we lost by one point, so don't let this 
confuse you that I'm going to be the match-winning player here, but I think okay. what's happened at this... <laughs> yeah, this yeah. What time's your car coming? About <laughs> 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 yeah, five minutes away I'm going. Um, <laughs> we're at Blackpool here, and uh, I think what's happened is the... You don't have to go from the beginning of the... No, 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 <laughs> well, all right, I'll be quick then. Yeah. Blackpool Football Club have a golf day every year. Right. And they're supposed to be honest about their handicap before they start. Right. So everyone sort of gets a fair game. Well, what happened on this occasion was Tony Ellis lied about his handicap. He's a lot better player than he said he was. Not so football, is no, 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 no. <laughs> golf. So when they won the golf... When he won the golf tournament, he said to his... Uh, colleagues, when we get on the pitch, and I ne next time I score, we'll do the golf routine. How okay. do you know these things? You just read these things from time to time in the local paper. <laughs> hey? The local Blackpool. You said the local Blackpool paper delivered to your house. <laughs> How much tonnage of paper do you go for a week? <laughs> we'll give you the bonus point. And here is the uh, the other player in that celebration, Andy Priest, to tell the story. We had a golf day, all the players, and uh, myself and Tony Ellis were partnered together. And um, we won. The lads weren't too happy about our handicaps, uh, saying that we cheated. And that might be true, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> that was his impression of Bjork there. <laughs> <laughs> so indeed, Blackpool had a. Bjork's a popular singer. Oh, no. <laughs> so Blackpool had a golf day. Maybe if they had the odd football day every now and again, they might not be in Division 2. <laughs> David's team now. Uh, for Motti, it's one of the most exciting fixtures in the football calendar. For David and Lee, it's Carlisle against Cardiff. <laughs> this is Carl Dale slotting one home for Cardiff. Yes, the referee says free kick. And it's taken quickly into Dale. Dale turns and scores! One thing Lee's never going to need, really, is, is I think the key to this one, which is a haircut. Right. Because I think is this what's about hair. Well, yeah, yeah. Sure. I think it will be by the time I finish. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's about me. How you got? I'm trying to say. John, that. leave it. We've all had a drink. Leave it. <laughs> if it's about hair. I'll just leave it to the other guys. Some so more questions about hair, so Lee leaves yeah. it to the other guys. That's what I suggest. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, I think what's happened here is. <laughs> In the week leading up to that game, Carl Dale's obviously had some sort of a haircut. Mm. Probably not a proper one from a hairdresser, but probably either his wife or a member of his family or... <laughs> <laughs> his I thought you were going to run through the whole family. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. A member of his family, his sure. wife, friend, maybe his uncle, but I think we don't what's know. What's happened is he's into the training, hasn't he? On the, uh, into the dressing room with this, with this so-called new haircut, and all the other players have taken one look and said, where did you get that done? Yeah. So on the Saturday, he scores. Or probably on the Sunday or Monday now, the way football is. John, what do you what do you think about the Sunday well, and Monday games then? Well, uh, <laughs> well, we're on the subject, John. I mean, you brought it up, so let's no, go I, with that. I was going to say, John, the way you're well, going, I just I prefer, the I prefer to do mine on a Saturday, Lee. Really? Do you really? Yeah, I do. All right, and the football? Well, around three. <laughs> Basically, they've gone, well, we'll do you, we'll, we could cut your hair better than that. So when he scored, they'd done a mock celebration of a haircut. Right. Uh, may, a bit more detail? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> give us if we were a little bit flippant there, John. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's a serious subject. I feel under pressure here, you know. You do. You expect me to answer all this. You know what it is? It's because you haven't got your coat on. That's why you're under pressure. <laughs> If you had your sheepskin you know, coat there, you feel oh. you feel happy with that, wouldn't you? I would. With a sheepskin. What about John? If you're looking at Nick, if you're answering, try, we'll try yeah, this. Just look okay, at Nick. Right. Look at Nick. Yeah. Pretend you're answering yeah. there. If I just sit here and went, bah. <laughs> <laughs> feel more at home. Bah. I do now. I can't yeah. do it. I can't do it too much. Otherwise, Rory gets excited. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had Is that coat? You've seemed to have had the same coat for no, since I was born. Well, it looks like the same coat, but I had a, I had a fellow in Hornchurch... He's going to fucking tell us! <laughs> I can't believe it! I fell in... I want... Ah! <laughs> I want to know... I know you want to know. I'm trying to I, tell you. I think the... Po Would you like to know about his coat? Yeah. Tell us, your coat is very popular, The John. quiz is just incidental. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it is. It is. The coat. You know the Essex area, don't you? Well, there's a fellow in Hornchurch Church used to make the... used to actually have the skins in his garage. He had skins in the garage? Yeah. And you didn't find that odd? 
<laughs> used to make coats, right? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. yeah. so I bought four. Yeah. Four? Thinking that they'd last me the rest of my career. Right. And yeah. unfortunately, your career lasted longer. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I'm pleased to say. So I wore all the coats. Well, one of them, went, on. to, one of them went to a museum. <laughs> Own. Yeah. Coat went. They borrowed it for an exhibition. Oh, they bought, I thought you meant your coat. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought you meant... <laughs> I'm going to give you the three points anyway. It's a relief. Uh, but uh, as you'll see, there's, there's slightly more to the hair story, and here's Carl Dale himself to explain. Well, basically, I wanted to get my hair cut before we played Carlisle, and there wasn't enough time, so I decided to uh, have a go myself with the clippers I had at home. Teared into an absolute nightmare, and um, got the mickey taken out by the lads. And uh, we decided if I scored that day to uh, make a celebration out of it. <laughs> so there we have it. The Cardiff players were taking the piss out of Carl Dale's new haircut. Cardiff are, of course, the only non English team to win the FA Cup, apart from Chelsea last season. <laughs> Their manager, Russell Osman, famously appeared in the film Escape to Victory, where his only line was, But we can win this game! A phrase he's had to give up since he joined <laughs> Cardiff. <laughs> At the end of that round, Gary's team have one point and David's team, or indeed John Watson, have four points. <laughs> we press on with our injury board round. Each captain picks a number which reveals a famous sporting figure and an object. What we'd like to know is how the object injured the sports person and put them out of action. David's team first, if you want to pick a number. Uh, two, please. Number two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's England frontman Alan Shearer and a communal bath. So how was the £15 million pound man kiboshed during the communal dip? 15 million quid? Yeah. Did he trip on his wallet? <laughs> there was a quite an interesting story about uh, the bath. <laughs> Uh, How interesting. Well, you remember when <laughs> Laurie McMenemy was the manager of South Oh, Hampton, is this one <laughs> Their most successful. Yes. He was allegedly in a, in a little bit of a push and shove with one of his players, wasn't he? Was it Mark Wright? Mark Wright, <laughs> it was, yeah. It, was it Southampton, you said? Yeah, I think it's... So they, they haven't got any bars at Southampton. They use the Solent, don't they? They might have been hit by a container ship. <laughs> <laughs> what a brilliant idea. Yeah. Alan Shearer got hit by a container ship. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you know when you used to play... It's only a small ground. Did they have communal baths where you played as well? Uh, various places, yeah. Did they ever tell you to wash behind your ears? <laughs> <laughs> Some physiotherapists were insistent. <laughs> and you used to say, I ain't got time. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you will do, innit? Now there's so much money in football, presumably most clubs, like something like Tottenham, where you played a bus, yeah. there must be 11 or 14 individual baths, aren't there? So why do people use the communal bath? Because it's sexier. <laughs> I want to buy that answer and sell it to the sun. Did <laughs> Rory jump in in front of him? His hair soaked all the water up. Alan jumped in, broke his leg. <laughs> old Lilette McGrath, as we call it. <laughs> for a slightly different reason. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, there's one major difference between Rory and Lynette. <laughs> is it a very early bar? No. Nope. And the Romans were still in it. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, they must have put some liquid in there. I love that place of the <laughs> soap that should have gone in yeah. or something, and he's gone out of it with a sort of, a, like, a, what you call a nappy <coughs> rash type thing. I'll, I'll have to give you that. I'll give you three points for that. Yeah, the story is that when Shearer was at Southampton, the team ran out of bubble bath, so they decided to use soap powder instead. <laughs> which is a great idea, but Alan was covered in a rash for days. It wasn't the washing powder rash that stopped him playing. The team came out of the bath so <laughs> fluffy, they couldn't cram them all into the team <laughs> bus. <laughs> Paul Gascoigne also suffered a bath time injury when he got into the tub at home and scraped his ass on the coal. <laughs> David Gower, of course, is no stranger to bath time tragedies. Only last week, his bath of Bollinger 58 was ever so slightly overchilled. <laughs> Alan Shearer's nickname is Smokey because he quite likes Smokey Bacon Crisps. We won't tell you why Rory's nickname is Cheesy What's It. <laughs> why is it, Rory? Well, actually, it's because I rather like them. <laughs> and also, I don't wash my knob either. <laughs> Uh, that joke explained for the hard of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team now, it's your turn to select a number. Number 11, please, Nicholas. Number 11, okay. 
No, that's the mighty Fulham, <laughs> indeed, and a football pitch. So, how did the pitch injure the lads from Craven Cottage? Was this Mad Jack pitch? Is this not ours? Is yeah. It? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Was it Mad Jack pitch? No. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Gary Lineker, a man so <laughs> sad he'll nick Lee Hurst's failed jokes. <laughs> you don't know that Mad Jack Pitch? No, tell me about it. Mad Jack Pitch, <laughs> he, was, he was a legend in the East End. He was madman, he was madman. And then he moved out to Hornchurch, right? <laughs> <laughs> and in later oh, years, in later years, he used to skin sheep. <laughs> Fulham Football Club, <laughs> Fulham Football Team. Injured by a pitch? Mm, was something mm. thrown on the pitch oh, which injured them? Glass. glass. Coins? Co no. I don't, I don't believe they throw coins on Scottish football pitches. For <laughs> <laughs> they throw IOUs on Scotland <laughs> and you get a nasty paper cut. <laughs> oh, is it the white from the lines? Yeah, the lime thing. Uh, you've got that look in your eye that you're going to say, <laughs> is it? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Uh, was keep it going, the white keep going. The lines, then? Yes, you're getting much closer. They snorted it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess okay. what was put down? Yeah. Bleach. Stuff. Um, put, put yeah, close to, no, I'm going to give you the three points. Right. Substance. Than, I'd do anything rather than hand Toxic it over to Motti. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the answer is that the Fulham lads were injured by the white lines. They got burns and blisters when the groundsman at Ashford Town used pure lime instead of whitewash by mistake. The Arsenal team played there the following week and got severely burnt nostrils. <laughs> So at the end of that round, Gary's team have four points and David's team have seven. In our next round, we ask the question, what's going on? We show each team some unusual sports-related footage and ask them to explain what it's all about. David, Lee and John, what do you suppose is happening here? Is it what women do when their preparing to go out on a dinner date with Rory? <laughs> I should just say, it is a genuine competition, OK? <laughs> so it is a genuine yeah, competition? Yeah, yeah. Was it sort of Channel 5's latest showpiece drama? <laughs> <laughs> Can't be Channel 5, you could see it too easily. <laughs> That's because I've got the aerial here. <laughs> It looks auditions. like, m not martial arts, but as if someone's kind of showing you how to defend yourself or Good. kick somebody or... Good. What Brilliant. would that... What do you call it when body, you... Body yeah. Guards. Yeah. If that, but Sorry? the trouble is, if that, <laughs> if, that, if that is an international bodyguard competition, therefore there must al also be an international assassin competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll have a head-to-head -head at the end. <laughs> it's a league system. They have cremation instead of relegation, that's all. <laughs> You, you're virtually there. I'll give you three points for that. In fact, it was a clip from the World Bodyguard Championships, which are held every year in Russia. Uh, the rather attractive girl with the auburn hair was declared the winner. She was trailing a disappointing 12th until the swimwear section. Gary's <laughs> <laughs> team now. It looks like sumo, but not as we know it. What is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Japanese version of holding the baby, wasn't it? <laughs> well, you've lived in Japan, Gary. Yeah. Although never worked there, obviously. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> you go to sumo wrestling when you're there, Gary? Mm, no, I won't once. Good fun? Not particularly. Well, it's similar only lasts about ten seconds of action, Yeah, there's lots it? and lots and lots yeah, of... Twice as long as you. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you watch it at all, Roy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I watch like it in the mirror. I watch it, just for the crack. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a man with a mask, and he, he looks as though he's just come along to scare the shit out of the children. To test the nappies. That is very close. Gary? Is it? Is it about It's going to make them cry, haven't they? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Rory, would you have something to add there? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, yeah, Gary's got it exactly right, uh, with some good help from Fred there. In fact, it's an event from Japan where sumo wrestlers do everything possible to make babies cry. And the first one to make a baby cry is the winner. Why don't they just drop them? <laughs> The competition was won by the bloke who waited till his baby was fast asleep and then tried to tiptoe out of the room without waking him up. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, <laughs> Gary's team have seven points and David's team have ten points. Now we come to the moment that those of you who've been waiting have all been waiting for. It's our special They Think It's All Over Grand Prix round from Silverstone. Gary and Rory racing in the Jordan cars will fight it out with Lee and David in the Williams in hot rubber action around the famous twists and turns that make up the Silverstone course. We go over now live to the track where I'm waiting to take us through the preparations for the countdown to the build-up of the big race. A state-of-the-art Formula One racing car. Powered by a state-of-the-art 10-cylinder, 750 horsepower engine, which is capable of speeds of up to 220 miles per hour. The ultimate driving machine. Interesting, but totally irrelevant. Because our competitors are going to be driving one of these. A Formula 27 state-of-the-art dinky car. Powered by engines like this, which will of course be familiar to any of you at home who have a flymo. It may not look big or expensive, but like David Gower's hair, appearances can be deceptive. This little beauty can leave one of Damon Hill's arrows standing on the grid, which is of course what the arrows tend to do. So our competitors are going to be having uh, filmed practice laps in one of these cars and then there's going to be a head-to-head, tyre-burning Grand Prix of six laps. So now, let's go over to the entrance gate where our competitors are arriving. <laughs> First to arrive is Gary Lineker, winner of last year's Sporting Challenge, clearly the favourite. He'll be racing in the Jordan number one car this afternoon. And in the opposite team, he'll be racing a number one in the Williams colours this afternoon, is David Gower. Very much the man in form. Is Lee Hurst, very much the man with form. He'll be the number two Williams in the Gower team today. Every inch the dark horse, except that he's not dark or a horse. Here's Rory McGrath. <laughs> the teams don their fireproof suits so vital for survival. These garments represent the cutting edge of space age technology. We got them from Blake 7. The fireproof tank there doing a vital job for everyone's well-being. <laughs> so, David, looking forward to the drive? Very much. I'm just a little bit worried, though. Where's the, where's the chauffeur going to sit? I just feel you're maybe a little overconfident already practising with the champagne. Oh, no. Terraberm every morning at 11, is that's me? Yeah. Well, I suppose you're usually back in the pavilion by 11, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a terrific challenge for you, Rory. Uh, several tight corners. It's going to be nip and tuck. Yeah, but I hope to fit into the car someday. <laughs> Now, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the race commentary, Gary. I mean, uh, racing commentators that haven't got the best of reputations. Murray Walker, for instance, uh, people tend not to think he's that good. In fact, his commentaries, for instance, would you be prepared to say, you know, that, that Walkers are crap? Gary. You know, I mean, I mean, as opposed to, say, Derek Pringle, for instance, at the cricket, who's a much better commentator. So, you know, I was just wondering, Gary, if you'd be prepared to say, once and for all, that uh, Walkers are crap but Pringles are fantastic. On the contrary, Nick, I would say that Walker's commentaries are among the crispiest and with the best flavours around. You should try it. You're a very sad man indeed. Here's your helmet, Gary. <laughs> right, I think it's time to go. You've all got your helmets on? Oh, uh, I haven't. Oh, sorry, Lee. I think it was the, uh, the stickers confused me. 
The competitors are in their cars and they're ready for the time lapse. Lee's found a crash helmet. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it on that. So let's go over to the track side and the sound of the inimitable Murray Walker, as imitated by someone much cheaper. Good afternoon, and you join us here at Silverstone for the They Think It's All Over practice session. I should explain that as in Formula One, these practice laps are timed, so the faster you go, the better position you have on the grid. Hurst there in the untaxed Williams had a bit of trouble at the start when he hotwired his car out of habit. And as he drives past those women, Rory McGrath is in pole position. At least part of him is. Lineker coming out of a dangerously tight turn. I expect there'll be skid marks there. We'll find out when he takes his suit off later. <laughs> and McGrath finishes his first lap in 1.23.94, which puts him in the lead, which is hardly surprising, as he's the first driver to complete a lap. And Lineker's grabbed the lead with 1.19.23. Incredible! And, and Gower's in trouble. He's stuck behind a caravan. Surely you have to question the decision to hold this race on a bank holiday. And there, I've just seen Hurst finishing his first lap. It looks a pretty fast lap. Yes, he's finishing at 1.17.75 and goes into the lead. McGrath fiddling with his helmet there. He really should stop that and concentrate on driving. Gower, yes, his first lap, believe it or not, is 1.17.94 just behind Hurst. And it's back to Nick in the pits. Now, before the race starts, just a few words about the significance of the flags used to signal to the drivers once the race has begun. First of all, uh, the black flag means that they must stop the race immediately. The checkered flag, of course, means that the race has been won. Uh, the red flag means that this beach is unsafe for bathing. The white flag means that Damon Hill has surrendered. And if you see the red flag with lion rampant suspended from Cornet, it means that David Gower is in residence. <laughs> and now a word about the points. The winner will get ten points, second will get six, third will get four, and fourth will get three. And now it's time for the race. So down to the starting line and the sound of that ever so slightly unfamiliar voice. So the grid order is as follows. Hurst, and in the dirty track it's Gower, then Lineker and McGrath. And just listen to that high pitch wine filling the air. As they wait for the lights to go to green. Oh no, no. And this always happens when you're waiting for the lights to go green. They're probably signing on as well, and they're almost certainly from Liverpool. All the driver's eyes will be fixed on those starting lights. There's the red. They're waiting for the green. There's the green. And they're not off. Sensational. They're uh, on. And the official has skidded on the track wearing arrow shoes there. And they've started. And there's Lee Hurst going past the cops as quickly as possible. So no change there. So it's Gower, Hurst, Lineker, McGrath, but not necessarily in that order. It could be Lineker, McGrath, Gower, Hurst. We just don't know, but one thing is for certain, it'll be one of those four followed by the others. <laughs> and if any of the drivers actually finish the race, they go ahead of Johnny Herbert in the world rankings. So they take the corner and Hurst, yes, it's Hurst into the pits. I'm not sure what the problem is. Oh, he looks a bit peckish. It looks like, yes, a pup and a sandwich. This last happened to Emerson Fittipaldi at Monaco in 1974 when he could have won the championship if he hadn't stopped for a Fanta. Well, first away in 8.6 seconds. Amazing. And as we joins the race at the back of the pack, he's got a lot of work to do. His tyres can't be helping him. They're completely bald, although he has tried combing the tread over in a sort of Robert Robinson arrangement. Hurst trying to get past Lineker, but in the lead, there's Gower coming out of Maggots into Brooklands with Luffield to his left, the book depository to his right, and the grassy knoll straight ahead. And Gower is in the pits. He's clearly got a mechanical problem there. We're not sure what it is, but we'll find out in just a minute. And here's the chief mechanic of the Gower team. Oh dear. Nah, mate. 
It's a drive shaft, isn't it, you know? I mean, that's not a little job. I've sent off for the parts. It's going to be uh, labour, you know, your VAT on that. Now, I reckon the best I could do be Wednesday. <laughs> Formula One, of course. All four cars have been going round for three laps now without a single one of them falling to bits. So, Gower in front, then Hurst, McGrath, Lineker at the back of the pack. And Lineker! Lineker has come into the pits. He's clearly been signalled by his pit team to come in. The car isn't equipped with a walkie-talkie, but with ears like that, he doesn't need one. like his career in Japan. And there's Lineker at the back, the nation's favourite grey-haired, chuggy-eared ex-footballer trying hard to get back in contention. And look at this! And look at that! And this! Now have a quick gander at this! And look at that! Now back to the race. And McGrath is in the pit, probably for refuelling. Yes, it's for refuelling, and he's in a hurry. No time for a garlic bread. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight pieces, an entire quattro the Johnny Pizza in 8.2 seconds. This is a record. So, Gower ahead of Hurst by 1.82 seconds, with the two Jordans trailing way behind. And there goes McGrath into the straight. He's got an eight-litre capacity, which is almost as much as the car. <laughs> the caravan. They took the run turning on the way to Winchelsea and they've been going round and round for nine hours now. A fantastic row going on in the front seats about Mrs Henderson's map reading. But the good news is that they've just broken their own lap record. So one, Gower, two, Hurst, three, McGrath and Lineker had disappointing fourth. There's Gower in the lead but Lineker can console himself with the fact that this is the longest distance ever driven by a professional footballer without being stopped for drink driving. And there's a tremendous tussle for the lead going on between Gower in the blue helmet and Hurst in the pink. It's absolutely neck and neck. And I have to say, I don't know why the Brazilian director is showing us this. In fact, I don't know why we employed a Brazilian director in the first place. And Hurst has snatched the lead. Hurst and Gower jogging at high speed. It's almost as if their wheels weren't touching the ground. And with the excitement at Fever Pitch, it's time for a commercial break. If you've enjoyed this video, why not try the other video in the They Think It's All Over range? They Think It's All Over No Holds Barred is a festival of good-humoured family fun, with the occasional fuck thrown in. <laughs> Available now, all quality stockists. And Hurst tries to go through on the outside. He's taken it too wide. He's off. He's in the gravel. Lee Hurst is out of the race. Oh, I hope and pray that the car's all right. Let's just enjoy that humiliating moment for Lee Hurst again from a variety of angles. There he goes, the bald git. McGrath goes into second place and gets a friendly wave of encouragement from his company rival. And Gower is on his own, as he has been for so many of the nights in his life. And Gower takes the checkered flag. He waves to his delighted domestic staff. There they are, who've lost a day's wages to come here today. And McGrath and Lineker choosing this moment to come out in equal second place. It's official. Rory will shag anything. There we are. 40 
21 seconds behind the lead. They tried their best, but unfortunately their best was rubbish. <laughs> There's Lenica. Gower. Well, the winner breaks open the magnum of Tizer. Another shake there. And David Gower quite baffled there by a bottle with a screw top. <laughs> Lee Hurst takes time off downstairs to sign autographs. And there's Rory McGrath jotting down his phone number on a piece of card and for once, not putting it up in a phone box. So, that's it from Silverstone. But if you want to see any more motor racing, you can always switch over to ITV, where the coverage will continue for at least another two weeks. And meanwhile, it's back to me in the studio. <laughs> So David gets 10 points for winning, Gary and Rory get 5 points each for tying in second place and Lee gets bugger all for failing to finish. 10 points each then and a complete waste of a day. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round Gary's team have 17 points and David's team have 20. We now demonstrate the remarkable transformation that comes over sportsmen as soon as they see anyone carrying a camera in our photo opportunities round. We want to know what stories lie behind the pictures. David Teams first, here's yours. So, that's uh, Gary Lineker and a giraffe, but what's the reason for the pose? And also I want to know what's the reason for that coat later, Gary. <laughs> it's good in its oh. day. Sure. <laughs> I don't see really that for a second. So, Gary Lineker and a giraffe, what do we think, David Steen? Well, first of all, a little tip for you, Gary. Next time you're having a photograph, try and keep your bush inside the trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of your infamous crisp adverts, isn't it? The recent one where you met Ginger Spice. <laughs> <laughs> or a new flavour of crisps, giraffe and onion. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, doesn't that get your taste buds going? I tell you, I saw this photo, I've got to be honest, I didn't realise what big heads they have <laughs> in the Lineker household. <laughs> yeah, they need them that big to support the ears, don't they? <laughs> it's not a sort of computer dating thing going oh, on. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm interested in the beginning of this. Well, it's, it's a computer dating thing. Go on. Well, obviously, I mean, it's, it's gone horribly wrong, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of yeah. <laughs> yeah, giraffes are obviously expecting I'll, somebody I'll better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you with a bunch of weeds under the giraffe, you know. <laughs> it doesn't quite have that ring to it, does it? Yeah. Well, he's such an old smoothie, you see, Dave. Lineker, yeah. he's there, he gives them the... He gives them that chip. Look at that little boy's smile, look. He, just, he gives them that and goes, weeds? <laughs> <laughs> they, fall, they fall at his feet as well, because he uses chloroform. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I think Gary's saying, you don't frighten me, I've got my left hand on my knob. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at that picture there, Gary, your mum lied to you, didn't she? You never grew into it, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Marty, you got any ideas? Well, not really about this, no. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it do... <laughs> is it anything to do with Gary being in Japan? No. Did, did you play go? any football in Japan? Yes. How many games? About 12. 12 yeah. games. Oh, and did you play any football? <laughs> <laughs> My whole career. Or did you do that running around in the six yard box hoping it'll hit your knee again? <laughs> is there any other way? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Cares about the rest of it. Um, so is, it is it one of those Christmas campaigns? You know, a giraffe isn't just for Christmas. Or... <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's worked, hasn't it? Who here has had a giraffe for Christmas? <laughs> Have you ever thought of a uh, giraffe skin coat mm. there, Molly? <laughs> That's an idea, actually. Because yeah. it'd keep your neck warm, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Gary? It's uh, at London Zoo and they named a giraffe after me. Was that a proud moment? I was, um... Not for the giraffe. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, the answer is indeed, well done, one point Thanks. for you there, that the giraffe was also named Gary Lineker and Gary went along to London Zoo to have his picture taken with it. In fact, due to an hilarious mix-up, the Japanese football club, Grandpa's 8, actually signed the wrong <laughs> Gary Lineker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He played two games, hurt his toe and buggered off to advertise crisps. <laughs> Incidentally, Rory McGrath has a baby sheep named after him, and all credit to him, he still pays maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team now, and you'll never guess who's in your photo. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's mm. David Gower washing his bat in fairy liquid. <laughs> you make it a sight. Any ideas? Is he just washing the red marks off the edge? <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd need something stronger than fairy liquid, wouldn't he? So he's wearing rubber gloves and he's just had his hands in some fairy. <laughs> is, is, is it just the, um, the bat you wash in, um, your bat you wash in fairy liquid, or do you wash your balls in that as well? <laughs> That's my <hoping. laughs> Don't Dave, worry about if it. you were a man, you'd respond. <laughs> <laughs> he insulted your own good name. Do you know what? He said your wife was an awful woman. He did. No, it was him who said it. You're... Can I just say, um, I think I've busted a rib. <laughs> well, that's an extra point for David Gower then. Uh... Looks as though he's pointing at the end of where the bat should have been. Is he saying that if it had been this long, I'd have hit six more runs? <laughs> and that would have made eight. <laughs> It's one of those um, cooking programmes, isn't it? Can't bat, won't bat. It's not likely to have been ready, steady, out. <laughs> Is it an advert for fairy sure liquid? It's not oh, really an advert for fairy liquid, no. Oh, Mummy, why is your husband so soft? <laughs> Well, obviously, once you've waxed your willow, you've got to wash it. <laughs> is, he, um, is, he, is he wiping off the marks left by the houseboy's buttocks? <laughs> <laughs> I think what's happened is that some attractive, slowly blonde called Emma or Sarah or you know, Fiona, works for a PR company, has said to David, will you come and wash a bat in a kitchen for us? He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly true, but for, for, to what end? Idle home exhibition? Yeah. It's correct for three for points. Nice. Yep, I'll give you that. Yep. Yep, that's right. Uh, he was indeed promoting the Ideal Home Exhibition. No, and after he'd finished I washing his pants... Huh? You weren't? No, yeah. Yeah. Something at so the Ideal Home. Two points off for you. I was, I was there for the kitchen. Zyko Kitchens. I, oh, oh. As, as long as it was in Zyko. the wider ballpark. Zyko Kitchens. <laughs> Psycho Set Kitchens. <laughs> so you go in, they get Psycho Psycho Devil. <laughs> <laughs> and then Zyko. you've got the wipe clean surface afterwards. <laughs> Psycho. Zyko. <laughs> for another kitchen then, basically. It doesn't matter, as long as it's within the ballpark of the Ideal Home Exhibition, they get the points, I'm afraid. I'm sorry about that. Was the kitchen a good kitchen? <laughs> Was it one of those chip It still is jobs? a good kitchen. They're long-lasting and hard-working. What? <laughs> Unlike you, David, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have 20 and Gary's team have 21. Our next round is a brand new one called Sporting Chicken. What happens is this. We show our teams a clip, in this case a women's double match at Wimbledon, and all they have to do is press their buzzers when they think the rally's about to end. The last person to buzz before the rally ends gets three points. But anyone who hasn't buzzed by the time it finishes loses a point. So it's dangerous to leave it too late. How long dare the teams let the rally go on before they press their buzzers? OK, time starts now and here comes the rally. Oh, 
So Lee didn't press. What? That's minus one point. <laughs> what? David pressed last, you get three points. Minus the one for Lee. Yes, you've all pressed, but you didn't press last. That's two points to David's team, which means that the score at the end of that round is Gary's team 21 and David's team 22. It's time now for our teams to feel up the famous as we play Field the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, it's you first, if you'd like to get in position. I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about that. Ah, oh, dear. Ah. I was the celebrity guest last I, I, time. I remember, yes, you were. Come on, Black Falls on, Rory. Oh, this time. Gary, your task is to identify a mystery sporting jump. personality in 90 seconds through touch Jimmy. alone. So, can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> Okay. What's that? And your 90 seconds start now. What the? <laughs> <laughs> He's hanged himself. It's not Mike Atherton, is it? Oh. Is it in it? Has he got an orange in his mouth? This is very peculiar. He's hanging six inches oh, off the dear. ground. <laughs> A lot of pubic hair. <laughs> what a big bulge that is. Ronnie, for God's sake, for God's sake, don't get his tongue. <laughs> ah! Eat up. I've got no idea what's going on. It's like having Motti commentating. <laughs> I think we're talking it's gymnast. Gymnast. Yeah. Who's that famous gymnast? <laughs> oh, you, you know, um, Suzanne Dando. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Gymnast. <laughs> Come on, uh, Gary, you're the sports expert. Neil something. Yeah, Neil. yeah, 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 good. Neil. Ah, oh, shitbags. Neil shitbag. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, Robert, no. Yeah, World Championship silver medalist yeah, in 93. God, Won every event in the 1990 I championship. Especially to watch it as well. Come on, time's running out. Uh, uh, What's the name? What's the name? Oh. It was, in fact, Neil Thomas. Thomas! We haven't had this much white powder on the set since Paul Merson was on the show. <laughs> OK, Lee and David, if you'd like to take your positions with your uh, blindfolds. <laughs> blindfolds on. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Okay, and your 90 seconds start now. There's something here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, hey. Hey, you got Hello. a drink? <laughs> hey, well. So, did you come here often? Oh. Hey, so I don't think we might have a lap dance. <laughs> Please, Jesus scotch, Christ. please, scotch, yeah. Right. Hey! Oh! 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 <laughs> well, if we just switch the tape off now. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, careful, Gower! <laughs> Gower dismissed once again. <laughs> <laughs> I say, uh, Dave, I can't speak for you, but what with this, I'm guaranteed there's two Woodies in the room. <laughs> <laughs> While you're up there, you got any champagne? 
Yes, blindfolded is good, Lee. Careful. <laughs> careful, mate. Hey. Please be careful. Hang on. Are we... Oh, we're up the... <laughs> Excuse me. Did we get extra points for knocking her off? <laughs> hey, 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 careful! <laughs> careful. <laughs> well, it, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, oh. You always do it with your eyes closed, don't it's you? It's thinner than I thought. <laughs> is it, um... It's too late, that's what it is. <laughs> Light falls off. And it is indeed <laughs> Suzanne Dando! <laughs> So, with neither side scoring any points, it's as you were as we finish with the bat washing, baby crying name game. The team in front goes first, which at the moment is David's team. So you start the name game, Lee, if you'd like to uh, take the envelope. You know the way, it the way it works, as many names as you can in the next 90 seconds, starting now. Uh, my race driver, British, never finishes Don't a race. Help. Correct. <laughs> uh, it's a bit harsh, a bit harsh. Uh, 1,500 metre, 800 metre runner, uh, British, female, uh, injured, well Kelly captured. Holmes. Correct. Play Martin. <laughs> England football manager. Motley! Motley! <laughs> <laughs> you uh, struggled British, there. British female javelin <laughs> fire, not fat in the whipbread, the other one. Tessa Sanderson. Correct. Uh, <laughs> this guy's got the same surname as, as uh, John Motson, if we use his nickname kind of thing, and his first name is the same as The Conqueror, who came over here and shot an arrow into King Harold's eye. William Motty. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say it any more clearly than that, really. No, very well, very good. British high jumper. Dalton Grant. Correct. There you go. Oh, <laughs> it's the same name as before, but reversed. Dalton Grant. No, reversed, you prat. <laughs> not, not lob, not lab, train. Uh, this one, uh, second name, if he had, he did, and now he... What? Oh, Motty. Second name, if he's a, a footballer. Was? If, no, his second name, right? Did Sounds you, like. You know at the end of sex you say, uh, did you... Uh... Thank you. <laughs> no, not <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and here's the money. Um, first, first, come first. On. No, nearly come here. First name would be your favourite. Oh. Oh. <laughs> first name would just like, give you a score. <laughs> Did you really oh. struggle with the name of the England manager? There? I thought you were going to say England manager in a certain year. You know. <laughs> England manager. Threw me a bit. 1962 like to 1962. Yeah. 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 No, so you moved on to 29, which means that Gary's team need nine to win. Lose. Rory, there's the envelope. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was charming, darling. Do you not normally say sorry? <laughs> I hope I haven't interrupted your needlepoint. <laughs> Don't tell, don't tell any of the other boys. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Rory, 90 seconds. Nine points needed, starting now. Uh, goalkeeper, appear, appeared in court recently. Hand Sagers. Bruce uh, Grumbler. Yeah, yeah. Um, boxer bites people's ears off and things like that. Uh, uh, Mike, Mike, Mike Tyson. Yeah. Um, uh, footballer going out one of the spy, the spy Skull that turned you down. David Beckham. David Beckham. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Um, he turned you no. down. Pol yeah. one, of them, one of them did. Um, a Russian, I think he's Russian, and might be Polish pole vault. Do you have Polish pole Sir, vaulters? Sergei Bubkas, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well. <laughs> um, he's a Chesterfield footballer. His second oh. name is, you get them in Holland and in lesbian bars. Sean This is an a American, American boxer, I think. Uh, comes in tins, but don't we all? Um, <laughs> like a vegetable. Uh, it's part of his tips. Uh, it's like... Uh, Caterpillars grow into the first part butter, of the Butter bean. Butter bean, yeah, butter beans. Um, a Scottish rugby player. Um, Danny Ken... Meehan. Very good, yeah. Um, this is a Portuguese goalkeeper. <laughs> you, uh, you can eat it. 
<laughs> it's a uh, part of the girls' beaver vocabulary. Nice. Yeah, very similar. It's on the tip of my tongue. That's the one. Um, uh, Quim. Quim. Very good. <laughs> uh, a poet and a cricket captain. Alfred was the poet. Um, Lord Tennyson. Yeah, very good. Um, oh, my cousin, fast bowler, Australian. You well, there goes Vinny. my chances of ever doing Vinny. songs of praise. <laughs> And so at the end of that nail-biting encounter, in fact, David's team have 29, but Gary's team have got 30. <laughs> Too funny over this evening. So, thanks to David Gower, Lee Hurst and John Motson, Gary Lineker, Rory McGrath and Fred McCauley. We're all off to stick some sellotape over the little hole in this video and record the X-Files over the top. <laughs> I'm Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now.